Man, this game can swing so easily. A 13-12 this week, losing some more ranks. And yeah, it wasn't that long ago we were 600th and everything was looking pretty rosy, looking to improve and it's gone backwards from there. Still sitting with the two trades. Team value is still at 15 one, six. And yeah, we look at the squad now and another poor captaincy choice in the end. Like it looks it looks good on the surface and just no attacking stats at all for, for young Mitchie Moses, especially when Ponga was my vice. Unfortunately for me, I had another injury this week. It wasn't to my starting side, but it stopped me from looping, and that was with Lodge with his eight. So I was very much hoping that, you know, really, with a looping situation like this at 121, with an eight as your auto-emergency, when my lowest was Moses, actually. So my lowest was my captain, which was which was terrible. But, you know, if I took away someone else, it would have been... You know, it would have likely been a 60 score. So there's 50 points there. So he'd at least have to... You know, really get us anything above 70 would be 100% worth not looping in this situation. And yeah, you would have expected that for sure with Moses. And that was very unfortunate. He had pretty funny. I didn't actually notice until right now that he was my lowest scorer with the 39 as captaincy. So yeah, you know, we, we see here with, with Supercoach how quickly things can change. And you know, week to week, getting an injury, you know, missing out on 60, 70 points on a, on a regular basis, which I have over the last bunch of weeks has, has really hurt me. Thankfully, did end up with the score of Asako there. I did reserve him. I did miss out on Tohu Harris, which was looking like a, a nice decision there where he was about 40 uh, before that try, that late try there. So yeah, at the moment, just the, the minutes he's getting, the missed tackles, and, and he's just not um, 100% Tohu at the moment, but he did get a lovely try there to pick up the 75. So thankfully, that didn't burn me too much because yeah, it was likely that I, I wouldn't have played like an Asako or or Horsburgh or something like that in the back end of the week there. So, yeah, just just shows you that the, the big changes that can happen week to week with um, with some of these big scores. And obviously the captaincy choices too. I've had a, a bunch go well, and I've also had a bunch that, that haven't. You know, there was that section there at the start. I think I captained Trebojevic on one of the ones where you got 20, and, you know, some of the other big scorers got like 100, 120 in that time. Um, there was that one I had. Hines had his lowest score, well, second lowest score of the year. And then the next week I changed it back to, to Cleary, who then got injured. So th those kind of things there, that's just as simple as, as getting yourself into the sort of top 500, just sort of four or five um, you know, unlucky decisions or you know, injuries or something like that. Um, but then shows the other way that you can get a few decisions right. Like, you know, there's that one earlier, I didn't play Buller when he ended up going 120, you know, those kind of things there. Asako this week, that really helped me kind of keep in the hunt if I didn't, you know, reserve Asako there then I'm down probably in the 2000s. So just on a week to week, it's um it's been a very interesting you know, way of things going. You know, Malatalo has been out. I've missed out on Tango. I got him in for one score. And then since then, yeah, that's what I said, the, the Paseca thing um, with his injury, he played him instead because Tango was out and you know he could have got the big score. So those kind of unlucky things. And if you're on the same boat as me with Tango, I think it's he's a sell now. Unfortunately, uh, he's just too too expensive to you know be missing, and we thought there was a chance he'd play last week, being on the extended bench, and then this week he hasn't been named at all. So he could be another week or so. Uh, he could, you know, they could just make sure he's ready come finals time. Yeah, you know, maybe playing round twenty seven or something. So with Tonga, I think he's a sell. Options though is a little bit difficult. So I have a hundred k in the bank with my two trades, and if I'm looking at it, I can go to the fullback position. We got Luttrell, he's, he's a little bit more expensive than what I can purchase at the moment at that sort of 823 that I'd be able to do. But you've got Teddy there as an option. If you're looking at the center wing, I have a lot of those high scorers in, in Toto that you'd want. You know, Greg Marzu, obviously. Uh, Manu's obviously the solid one as well. And then you've got the guys like DWZ, who could be a very solid option in that, in that center wing. There's not a lot else at a higher price that you'd be looking at. You have like sort of a one to two week play in like Jaden Campbell down below here. They could, um, they could work out okay. You've got guys like Jordan Rappiner, who's who's fairly cheap as well. So if you're looking to go down and then potentially upgrade elsewhere, then that could work really well. In my 5.8, it's been really frustrating you know, the last few weeks. You think you've got probably the best pairing in the 5.8 position, and then you've got, well, obviously Ponga would be, uh, but he can you can use him as fullback as well. But Munster and Walker have been really underwhelming, unfortunately. Munster solid, and then has these lower games, obviously, and he just doesn't have that that real boom hundred that we can get from Ponga on a regular basis. But uh, Walker's been the very disappointing one, given that he was going pretty good through the buy period, and then obviously made the Origin team and and missed a couple of weeks for us there. And since then, he hasn't been 
very helpful for our side at all. So that's a very frustrating one for us. Um, and they do come up against, what have they got here? They've got Dragon. So you very much hope this week is the one where he goes nuts. Um, if he doesn't, then it's been a very frustrating sort of hold for us during, um, during the, this back end of the season. Looking uh, for the next few weeks. Next week's fine with the Broncos players out. The one after that, Murray's going to be out. So this 2RF position is something that I need to look at and just make sure that you're checking that out as well with your South players because I've got Walker uh, as well in that position. So and that's probably the other thing there in the center wing. I end up having to, because I had some, um, oh, what I have to, had some issues with my, just my funding and I wanted to, uh, I think Tungo ended up not playing or no, Toto and I was going to get Toto that week and ended up not playing. I went for Tungo um, and I would have been able to hold Johnson, which would have been nice. But um, yeah, he's, he's another one that you could use as a bit of a play this week as well, AJ. And it's definitely something that I'll look at as well. But obviously that buy in round 26 is a little bit hurtful. And um, at the moment, the front row forward is being dominated by you know, Payne Haas, to be honest there. So he's the guy um, obviously coming off a couple of low ones, but a big one last week just put these guys to water an extra 30 points on him on these guys it was it was helpful and we, we do need at the moment a bit of a, a try from Fanua Blake or, or a Tarpany to to kick us over the edge there Hopgood was solid 67 Murray's been good the last couple of weeks since we've grabbed him as well um yeah that's probably the 2RF is the one I need to look at just with that buy coming up just to make sure that if there is an injury coming up and if you're low on trades like myself or if you happen to use one or two this week and you're down to zero that uh, you have enough cover in there for when Murray is out. Very much the same with the 5 8 position, you know, to only have the one. And then Munster could have cop an issue in the next few weeks as well. So being aware of that is going to be helpful. Looks like Malatalo is back, so cover is there for that. Munro, unfortunately, being dropped, it seems like, after his, uh, unfortunately, bit of a, a poor effort um, on his part in terms of errors. Yeah, that, that hurt him on that one. So, yeah, that's the squad at the moment. Kind of happy with, you know, Osako, as I said, they've got a bit of a easier run coming up. So they come up against the Roosters this week and he could definitely do well again. So I think I'd be happy to play him this week. Tungo will be coming in, in that one. And then that's where the reserves makes it a little bit more difficult because, you know, are you going to, are you going to sit one of these front row forwards? Uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't be sitting Walker. Um, you know, Moses could go to Cleary this week. There's a few different options that I'm looking at. Um, but yeah, the, the reserve section is going to be, a tough sort of decision, I think, this week. The sit v start, especially if I am trading Tungle to to one of those to one of those guns. There it could be a little bit of a matchup base in this one. So yeah, lots to think about coming into four rounds remaining. And yeah, with two trades to go, it's it's important to get that right. Um, but obviously, as I said, you know, having Tungle there at seven twenty odd k, probably not worth um, probably not worth it at the moment. Let's be honest. So there's definitely an opportunity for me if I wanted to with Moses having a tough matchup again against the Broncos to be able to go Moses to Cleary. I'm a little bit short of that. So I could then go Tungle down to a Johnston, down to a DWZ, something like that. Who, someone who, someone, somebody who like that who has that boom or bust kind of potential for us to make a bit of a run at that top thousand, which I definitely think we can get there um, with you know some good good coverage, You know, build up a really nice team value across the season. And yeah, that shows here where this week, in the next couple of weeks, I have no one out and you know, struggling to, to decide on my, on my 17 or 18. So... That's that with my squad at the moment, guys. I hope yours are going well. If you have any questions around Supercoach and your squad specifically, send me a message there. Um, crazy that the odds for Panthers, $1.08 against Manly, $7.80. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, good luck this week, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.